Okay, thank you. Can you see my screen? Okay. Um, thanks to the moderators. Thank you so much for hosting this event. Um, I'm here to speak about our group research called South Florida RAD. Um, it's focused on a wastewater-based monitoring program for COVID-19. Um, our, our project is a joint project between University of Miami and Wild Cornell Medicine. We are funded through NIH. Uh, there are three PIs on the project, um, Chris Mason of Wild Cornell Medicine and from the University of Miami, Stephen Schur and myself. I am Helena Solo-Gabriel. And for more information about our project, you can visit covidsfrad.org. I wanted to begin by describing the goals of our project. Uh, we have three specific aims. Um, they focus on data standardization in developing an informatics infrastructure, characterizing the wastewater, and then integrating that information with human health surveillance. So essentially we are pairing or coupling human information, human COVID-19 uh, cases with wastewater information. We're integrating that in a uh, data platform that then um, we use to develop uh, models to predict outbreaks. Um, our intent is that these models will be used by decision makers to uh, develop policies that will minimize the transmission of disease. A big portion of our research is in da data standardization. We're working with three laboratories and integrating all of the information from all the laboratories um, coupled with the human health surveillance is a challenge. Um, and we do, a lot of our work is focused on developing that data uh, platform. But in this talk, I'm going to present mostly on the outbreak characterization portion of the work. So our ultimate objective is to relate wastewater measurements to predict COVID-19 uh, cases. This involves pairing the human health surveillance with wastewater SARS-CoV-2 levels. As we know, in addition to transmission through aerosolized droplets from, the res from respiratory systems, humans that are ill with um, COVID-19 will also excrete the, um, the virus through their feces and urine. And as a result, um, it is found in the sanitary sewer system. We can then collect the sample from the sanitary sewer system and then analyze it for the RNA of the virus called SARS-CoV-2. In order to uh, do this work, um, every one of our uh, sample collection plans are paired again with a human surveillance system. Uh, we have a student residential uh, monitoring program um, that is led through our University of Miami, which has a very extensive testing, tracking, and tracing system uh, led by our um, provost for research and also the president of the university who are um, experts in public health. And um, on campus, uh, our main academic campus um, is the Gables campus, and you can see our monitoring stations given by the blue balloons there. Uh, in terms of student surveillance, during the fall and spring of 21, the students were tested weekly by nasal swab qPCR augmented with um, breath tests. Um, and then we were able to get those results um, by total test and by positive um, patients, uh, but on the um, level of both the building and, and building scale. In addition, um, during the fall and summer of 21, um, students that were unvaccinated were tested weekly and then when we got a spike at one of the dorms, um, the sewage from the dorms, um, all the, the residential students were tested at that time, providing us with additional information about the occurrence of COVID-19 within the building. In addition to our student residential monitoring, we also have the university hospital that treats known numbers of COVID patients, and we have access to electro, uh, electronic medical record records that provide us with information about the severity of the disease of the patients um, within the hospital, and we couple that with the wastewater data. And then at the county level, we also have um, samples that we collect from a major wastewater treatment plant called the Central District Wastewater Treatment Plant, which services about 800,000 people in Miami-Dade County, and we pair that up with the data that's available on the county basis through the Department of Health. One of the main innovations that we have developed through our study is a new technology for measuring SARS-CoV-2 in wastewater. We call it the Volcano Second Generation or V2G qPCR. This technology was developed through the University of Miami Center for AIDS Research, CIFAR, um, under the direction of um, Dr. Mark Sharkey. Mark Sharkey was developing um, sample um, methods 
or analysis methods for saliva. And as you can see in the, in the upper right graphic, um, the, the negative versus the positive um, results are very distinct um, in terms of their fluorescence. Um, this technology use, uses a novel polymerase that is capable of using either DNA and, and RNA, and therefore avoids a cDNA um, synthesis step, simplifying the process, making the process less expensive and also faster. We have a turnaround time once it gets to Mark Sharkey's lab of about two and a half hours. Um, this technology was adjusted for measurements in wastewater. And as you can see, comparison with the more traditional RT-qPCR versus the V2G qPCR provides comparable results between the two technologies. In terms of our university surveillance, um, this is the, the documentation of, of student and faculty positives um, at the University of Miami over time as given by our dashboard. On the left, we have the number of people testing positive. The gray bars correspond to the students and the gold correspond to faculty and staff. On the right, we can put the wastewater levels in a logarithmic scale um, where wastewater is expressed in genomic copies per liter. We have our detection limit for our SARS-CoV-2, which is on the order of about 100 genomic copies per liter. And then superimposing on that, we have our weekly wastewater data um, given by the yellow squares um, as shown here. And then we can start taking moving averages, moving averages of the human health, seven day moving average and a, a three sample uh, moving average for the wastewater. And what we can see from our um, on-campus surveillance is um, early during the fall semester, there was a wave that was observed before we collected our wastewater samples. Then there was a second wave um, during the fall semester that was captured by the wastewater. Um, there was a, a large, larger wave during the January time period, again, which was captured by the wastewater. And then the fourth wave during the spring semester, um, again, um, observed both in the wastewater and in the human cases. Interestingly, once the uh, vaccine was available for um, the community and the students, the values in the wastewater and also amongst the human population decreased significantly. And then we had the last um, wave, the fifth wave um, associated towards the end of the summer um, associated with the Delta variant. This data was analyzed by epidemiologists on our, on our project, Naresh Kumar and Alejandro Montero. They found um, through this analysis that SARS-CoV-2 in wastewater was a four-day lead indicator of cases on campus. Um, they developed a model based on the wastewater data where the concentration of RNA uh, genomic copies per liter given by the C, take the natural logarithm of that, will give us a relationship, an estimate of the positivity. So for example, if we have 10 to the six or a million genomic copies per liter in the sewage, we can estimate that there will, the individuals that are contributing to that sewage have about a 12, there's a 12% positivity, 12% of the population is um, likely positive um, within that group. This is our weekly sampling program. And um, in addition to weekly, we, right now actually we're sampling twice a week, um, but in addition to our weekly sampling, we also have hourly and, and daily sampling that we also do for to answer specific questions. And, um, but our sampling is pretty similar in terms of how we process them, but um, the way we process our sample is we take our raw wastewater and we concentrate it using electronegative filtration. We produce three filters. And each of those filters are then sent to one of the three laboratories, um, either Mark Sharkey's lab at Center for AIDS Research, Sean Williams Laboratory at the Oncogenomic Shared Resource at the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami, or Chris Mason's lab at the Integrated Genomics La Laboratory at Weill Cornell Medicine. Two of those filters undergo rapid um, detection um, by both V2G with um, checking by RT-qPCR, and that is what we use on a weekly basis for real-time um, um, forecasting of COVID cases on campus. Um, additional filters um, also um, are go to uh, Chris Mason plus uh, at um, Sean Williams Lab. Um, those filters also undergo a deep sequencing process using Arctic. And in Chris Mason's lab, that data is then processed through a bioinformatic pipeline that then gives information about variants. In terms of the results, uh, the top results here are the qPCR by V2G, um, giving us the, the values over time. And then on the bottom graph, we have the variation of the variants 
Um, as you can see, these are the dates of the sample collection um, on the bottom. And uh, we can see from the March to early June timeframe, the dominance of the variants within the wastewater um, was the alpha and beta variants. But as we proceed into June through July, and then ultimately into August and September, we get a dominance of the Delta variant as observed in the wastewater. And this was reflected within the patient samples as well, such that the wastewater is able to also not only detect uh, uh, the COVID-19 cases, but also can provide information about the variants among the community. So this is a um, presentation of some of the work that we're doing. Um, before I end, I wanted to again acknowledge the National Institutes of Health for the provision of funding, um, also the um, collaboration through the University of Miami and Wild Cornell Medicine. Uh, this collaboration would not have been possible without the support that we received through the university, through the upper leadership, through facilities, through environmental health and safety, our laboratory team, students, um, and uh, field sampling teams. Um, very much um, appreciated. And I will end by providing my email address and then also our webpage for more information at covidsfrad.org. Thank you.